judge could dismiss a lawsuit filed by dozens of sailors who claimed they were poisoned by radiation from a nuclear power plant. The sailors were on board USS Reagan when it sailed to Japan to help victims of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Well, the sailors now claim they were exposed to dangerous doses of radiation, which has ruined their health. They sued TEPCO, the Japanese company that Ooh, operates nice. the reactors. Yeah, cool. Lawyers for TEPCO told the judge their client is not responsible for the safety of U.S. sailors. Attorneys for the sailors strongly disagree. The plaintiffs are military personnel who were operating aboard the USS Ronald Reagan or other ships within the uh, Seventh Fleet, including the Washington, the Preble, and several others. And they were uh, performing a humanitarian mission known as Operation Tomodachi to deliver food and supplies and clothing to the people who were ravaged by the earthquake and tsunami. We represent 51 young sailors, many of whom in their 20s, uh, who have various illnesses. For example, we have a 22-year-old kid who's now uh, blind in both eyes. He has a tumor. Uh, he also has leukemia. Uh, no one in his family has ever had these kinds of problems before. Many of our plaintiffs have various illnesses such as testicular cancer, excessive menstrual bleeding, various gynecological problems, problems that have surfaced without any kind of family history. And the only causation that can be connected to these medical life-threatening issues is their exposure to radiation in this Operation Tambadachi. So. The thrust of our case is that these people were never warned about the true situation on the ground and the fact that they would be entering into a radioactive zone such that they would all receive uh, uh, what's been described as low-dose radiation, but it was repetitively uh, given to them over days. I mean, from March 12th for at least three weeks, in some instances longer. Uh, so the, uh, the, the thrust of our case is basically that the Tokyo Electric Power Company was operating a facility that they knew was uh, a problem. These U.S. sailors went in to deliver water, to deliver food. They did not go in to battle radiation. And uh, TEPCO, the company that operates this, uh, this power plant, misled the United States Navy regarding the level of the radiation. So these soldiers went out, many of whom jumped into water to rescue people, not knowing that at the very moment that they were swimming in this water, TEPCO was releasing millions of gallons of radioactive, radioactive water into the Pacific. And so two and a half years later, they are now stricken with these life uh, threatening illness. So we are suing at this juncture for an unspecified amount of damages. We're suing this foreign corporation because they are doing business in America. Their second largest office outside of Tokyo is in Washington, D.C. This foreign corporation caused harm to American rescuers. And, uh, and they did it in a way that give rise to jurisdiction here in this country. Specifically, uh, the, the USS Ronald Reagan and many of the Seventh Fleet were based right here in San Diego. So that's why we're in, San, in the federal court in, in San Diego. Uh, there is a bar known as the Ferris Doctrine, which prevents service people from suing the military uh, for situations that occur during their performance of their duties. But, but the real reason is because the U.S. military is not responsible for the victimization of these people. It's the Tokyo Electric Power Company people. I joined the Navy and uh, in hopes of getting out of Palm Springs and I ended up on the USS Ronald Reagan. I launched and recovered aircraft on board the USS Reagan so if there needed to be a jet launched or a helicopter launched we were there to see it happen. As soon as you kind of stepped foot on the flight deck and kind of went outside, you had this taste of like aluminum foil and it just, it was cold and there was just a different type of atmosphere. There was a lot of debris in the water and we just weren't concerned about what was going on with the whole radiation and any of that. Our concern was getting our food and providing humanitarian assistance to those that were in need on the coastline. We set up base in a hangar and um, we did humanitarian missions. We flew water and food uh, to the Japanese peoples surrounding the, um, the nuclear reactors. And uh, 
My job, I was maintenance admin, so I kept track of logbooks and stuff like that. But Marines, when you have downtime, you work on the aircraft as well. So I actually helped decontaminate the aircraft, wash the aircraft, and um, I actually touched a lot of the contaminated parts because uh, we replaced a lot of parts uh, because of the con contamination. I want to say a number, maybe 16 engines we uh, replaced, which is crazy. All my commander said was uh, we wrote the handbook on um, aircraft radiation. Uh, so when an aircraft was contaminated, they just replaced it because they didn't know the cause. Maybe corrosion could occur. Uh, so as soon as the Navy detected the radiation, we replaced it. So. Um, I'm not sure if there was anything physically wrong with the engines when they replaced it, but they were contaminated, so we replaced it. We had seven helicopters, so uh, each helicopter has two engines, and we replaced 16 engines, around 16 engines. And that's, so, a, that's unusual? That's beyond unusual. Our ship provided nearly all of our food. We, um, the entire ship's company, we didn't really have any food rations after, but we were more concerned with people who didn't have any food or any place to stay. Um, so we ended up giving all of our food. We had individuals coming up with personal, uh, personal stuff like blankets and clothes and stuff, and we did everything possible to get the food on the helicopters and to the mainland as quick as possible. We had Navy around with uh, their detectors and suits and stuff, and they detected high radiation. Uh, a lot of the flyers and pilots, uh, they um, removed their gear. They took their gear, um, their boots, their flight suits, all that stuff. And um, it wasn't until a couple weeks after that they ended up giving us paint suits, they call it protective gear, but it looked like paint suits. Um, so we were unprotected for several weeks. My entire time there, we spent the majority of our day getting aircraft off the boat that had um, first aid equipment and food and supplies and stuff like that. And then we'd spend the rest of our day going down through the decontamination area. And um, that was kind of a whole other experience itself. It went as far as them putting rubber boots on top of our um, on top of our work boots, and that was the only preventative from us and the outside elements, the radiation on the deck. So um, when we came down from the flight deck and went through decontamination, they would scrub our boots and take readings off of our clothing. And if we had articles of clothing that were contaminated, they made us take it off and oftentimes there are people who were stripping down completely behind curtains and were putting on little cloth suits so they can walk back to the birthing and change because they had their entire clothing taken away and we weren't really prepared for any of that. I received no protection um, but like I said I was main its administration so um, but a marine always helps out with every job when you have downtime. So uh, when we transported the contaminated parts to the supply, um, I was in contact with the contaminated parts to replace them. The first helicopter that came back with radiation, the boat was kind of unsure what to do with it. Um, we had never, from my understanding, the Navy had never been in a situation like that before where they were exposed to radiation. And they had a high amount of personnel who were going to be exposed. Um, I honestly don't think the Navy was ready to handle everything that happened, so the procedures were kind of jumbled a little bit, and um, you could tell the entire command was concerned because they were trying to do everything possible that they could to take care of us. I mean, we couldn't get any assistance from ships because ships weren't allowed to come in the area that weren't already exposed to the radiation. And, no, par no ports would let us in, Japan wouldn't let us in because we were too, we had too much radiation. Guam wouldn't let us in, Korea. Um. <laughs> what we do know uh, is the only uh, standard that has been accepted worldwide is the fact that there's no safe level of uh, radiation. There is 
around 5,500 on the boat at the time. Um, not everybody was exposed to the outdoor elements. I want to assume that the people that were on the deck 24-7 getting these helicopters and food off the deck were the ones that were exposed the most because um, I mean, not too many people could say they were standing on the flight deck and were tasting foil at 9 in the morning. We thought that we had felt a plume because there was like kind of this warm air that kind of went past the ship and it just it was, you can kind of tell in the differences between like jet exhaust and we didn't have any jets going around at the time and I don't know, it was like 20 degrees outside and you could feel this kind of warm air and you kind of enjoyed it at first but then you're like, Sir. is that aluminum yeah. foil that I taste? <laughs> we had it in the air, in the water, it was everywhere. There was a point where I was uh, downstairs um, getting water right before I had to go back up top and um, I was filling up my camelback, which is a big jug that has you know, water and you can put it on your shoulders and stuff. And the ship's captain came on board and secured communications and said, you know, we're not going to allow any communication out board the ship right now because we have a little situation going on. He proceeds to tell us that all potable water is now contaminated and we have people who are drinking the water, people who are showering in the water, people who depend on this water. It's like we've been drinking this water for how many days now and you're just telling us it's contaminated. It's At first we wanted to point the blame at the commanders on our ship, but we were completely ignorant to the fact that they didn't know either, that we were literally running for our lives from this radiation. And TEPCO ultimately would have told the truth about the radiation plume that they were releasing. We could have, we wouldn't have been a mile away from the reactor plant, I mean. Really, the, what is the core of what we're talking about here is not what the U.S. military should have known, right? We're talking about a military that was responding to a humanitarian emergency. It's not a military that is going in thinking, okay, we have to be aware that there could be this possible radiation from these, this meltdown because that wasn't something that TEPCO was, was, was making available, making known to people. Is TEPCO providing their own government with proper information? No. So we can expect that the decisions that are going to be made by the men and women in control of the ship are going to be only as good as the information they're provided with. Um, we, we do know that once they got on the ground and they learned more about what levels of radiation were there, they moved the ship further away from the coast. And that's what should have been known and could have been known, could have been told to them by the TEPCO executives and the TEPCO officials um, before they got there, while they were on the way. I want to say this radiation plume followed us because we could not get rid of it. We, no matter where we went, it was like we were being, the ship was, uh, commander was coming on and he was telling us that we're going to hit another radiation plume, you know. And then it got to the point where, hey, the water is contaminated, we're going to have the lockdown, and we're going to go and go on the opposite side of Japan and try and get away over there. And as soon as we got there, our water was still contaminated, so it was just, wherever we went, it was an ongoing issue with radiation. We were being chased, literally, by a death sentence. I have disc degenerative disease in my lower back, and um, I have no family history of it, um, and I have no uh, accident that could have caused it, and um, I have some digestive problems as, as well, um, and stomach pain. So it wasn't, it wasn't right after the event, but it was about six months to a year after. And uh, as Marines, uh, we don't like to go to medical, so I didn't report the problems while I was still active duty. The irony out of all of this is that uh, the Tokyo Electric Power Company gets capital infused to it, gets money from the Japanese government. $1 it's, trillion. Dollars. And, and they, the Japanese government is a major shareholder in this foreign corporation that has been described already. And they had the largest return from the bailout money that they got in their history. They made more money in the last quarter than they ever made before. And they're not allocating the money to decontamination as they should. Right now I have a lot of weight issues and thyroid issues, issues that I didn't have before I came in and issues that I didn't have after I had my child. Um, but I'm just, uh, 
I personally can't afford to go to a doctor and get checked out um, like the others can. I'm kind of almost nervous, if you want to say. I'm really nervous to find out what's going to happen. I would like to be compensated uh, because I don't know what problems are going to arise in the future. If I'm 24 and I already have disc degenerative disease, I mean, usually that happens to people in their their higher 40s and 50s. So uh, I hope nothing comes about it worse. And then the digestive problems, I, ho I hope that doesn't worsen as well. Um, I would just like to be compensated uh, in case it does happen. I have a four-year-old daughter. Yeah, she's my motivation throughout this. We also want to bring awareness to the whole world uh, and specifically to the 70,000 uh, first responders who went to Japan to help in this rescue mission that they're all at risk. In fact, we're all at risk. The, this radiated water is going to hit right here in San Diego in the Pacific Ocean in 2015. And uh, this is another testament to say we have to stop nuclear war, nuclear weapons, nuclear power plants. It's not the way to boil water. Each of the nuclear plants that on the planet now are leaking radiation, and they're causing major, major harm. So this is a civil rights environmental lawsuit, not only for the victims, but for everyone who could be affected by nuclear power. The judge indicated she might dismiss the lawsuit or allow a Japanese court to decide the controversy.